Hello from Dinwiddie County, Virginia. Uh, today, we are here at the Pamplin Historical Park and the National Museum of the Civil War Soldier. Uh, this is um, a privately owned museum here in Dinwiddie County, um, run by, I believe it's the Pamplin Foundation. And it's for a privately owned uh, museum, it's very well done. Um, okay. Now, the building behind us is the National Museum of the Civil War Soldier, and the historical park is the, um, the outside area, which will, will be um, there later. We're going to be doing the inside portion first. Um, just a little bit of history of this. Um, this area is kind of um, key to the end of the Civil War. Um, and honestly, to me, this is really where the Civil War ended. Um, April 2nd, 1865, the Union forces uh, finally uh, were able to break through the Confederate lines um, not too far from here um, on, on this property and ultimately culminating, you know, seven days later after a, uh, uh, a brief um, retreat to Appomattox Courthouse where Robert E. Lee um, uh, surrendered to Ulysses S. Grant. Um, now, the inside of this museum, it actually is really neat because it, um, it starts at the beginning of the Civil War and goes, basically follows it to the end of the Civil War. And there's, a, there's kind of a, a unique um, experience with this, which we'll show you when we get in. So um, we're going to go ahead in um, and get our tickets and we'll see you inside. All right, so uh, we're, we haven't made it quite inside yet, so but kind of just to show you what's all in this property. There is the National Museum of Civil War Soldier. There's the military encampment. Tudor Hall Plantation, which um, the Pamplins have a, um, a relation um, with, this uh, family. That's um, how they came um, to buy in the property. Uh, the Breakthrough Trail, which obviously is the uh, area where the Union forces uh, broke through the Confederate lines. Battlefield Center, which um, has a uh, map, a, um, a s small movie. And then there's the Banks House, um, which um, I don't think we're going to get out the Banks House today, uh, but that is where uh, Grant made his headquarters um, immediately following the breakthrough. All right, so one of the things that they do have out in the front of the building is every state that uh, was involved in the Civil War. Um, it's estimate, these are, and these are estimated numbers, uh, how many served, how many died.
so we uh, have got our tickets. Um, this is the mission prices, adults for 15. Um, if you are, do have a military, seniors, teachers, students, 12, and then your children. So um, not badly priced, very reasonable. Um, so um, they do offer a, a membership so you can come back more times. All right, so here is the, uh, this is a map of the property. Um, we are starting here at the National Museum of the Civil War Soldier. And then once we go through the, um, the inside part of the museum, um, we're gonna make our way to the Tudor uh, Plantation, which is um, the exact, what it looked like back in the 1800s. And then we have, uh, all the earthworks. The earthworks right here are the exact earthworks from the battle. So as you come in, um, there's a wonderful, wonderful marble work of, uh, of the United States at the time of the Civil War. Now, obviously, you get the gray for the southern states, green for your um, neutral states, states that, you know, remain to be neutral. And, you know, those states had Union uh, forces and Confederate forces. Of course, blue for the Union. And, of course, we'll come all the way out here into the West Coast. We had three states in the Union. And then the red, those were the territories at the time. All right, and as you come in, um, come into the... Uh, the building to the right is the Civil War store, which we will go through um, after we've gone through everything. So, but um, very, very nice store. And again, we'll hit that on the way out. All right, so this hallway now, here's where we came in. If you made a right, um, this goes back to kind of the, the restrooms in a um, meeting, eating area um, that obviously is closed off uh, for right now, but you can have um, some banquets, some meetings, and of course the big thing is the ins inside here is the restrooms down here. Of course we all know I love pennies, pressed pennies. Here are some the pressed pennies that they do have here. It only cost you 50 cents. All right, so we're back up front where we came in. Now, we're, we would make a left-hand turn heading to Duty Called Me here, which is the inside museum. So this, uh, this museum is um, run completely on donations. So what the really neat way for them to collect donations is whatever your state you're from, they ask you to p place your donation in the state you're from. Now, I'm from Ohio, but of course we're living here in Virginia. And it really has, you know, as of September 30th, what has been donated by, by patrons. And of course, a really, really nice, just like up in the front, of all the states that belong to the Southern, to the Confederacy, to the Union, your territories, and your neutral states. All right, so we are currently at the duty called me here. This is very, really a neat um, idea where here, and by the way, here's the entrance to the indoor museum. Again, it follows um, the United States at 1860 and follows all the way through the end of the Civil War. The neat thing apart about this is you get to pick a soldier, Confederate or Union, that you are gonna follow all the way through the Civil War. So here's the soldiers that you get to pick from, and they, they range from the different ranks. You have lieutenants all the way down to your privates. Um, and at certain um, junctions, you will come across these markers um, that, you know, when you uh, click in um, the number, and you basically, it even says press one, and then press the green button, it will give you the information you have. So, um, but yeah, so 
uh, per the, the museum, they don't want us uh, filming on the inside because of a lot of the artifacts that um, are alone and aren't reproductions. So, you know, um, we will not be uh, videoing in there, but we're still going to go walk in, and then when we get done, we'll uh, tell you about some of the stuff that we did see. But again, we aren't going to be videoing inside the museum. All right, so we get, we've got our listening devices, headphones, and everything, and everything's been sanitized and everything. So we, like I said, we got to pick our soldier. Um, I went with uh, Landers, Private Landers, from uh, Company H of the 16th Georgia Infantry Regiment. Who'd you choose? Peter Welsh. Peter Welsh. So Peter Welsh... He is from Company K, 28th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment. So we both went, I went with a Confederate, Tim went with a Union soldier. So um, again, it's got everything. When you, you hit the, get to the one, you pick, click on that, and you get the listen. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to head on in, and we'll see you at the end of the museum. All right, so um, we it's have... an hour and a half later. Yeah, it's an hour and a half later. We went in at 10.50 to start the inside museum um, and we just finished um, it is 1220 so but still and and what we did um, is to kind of get a good take feeling of how long it's going to take you to go through we stopped and listened to every everything all right um, which it was one through 45 spots and each spot was uh, between a minute to two minutes long, gave it explanations. Um, now, again, the inside of the museum, it follows the, um, the beginning of the Civil War, basically um, right at the be in 1860. Um, of course, started in 1861, the Civil War, but it's talked about briefly before um, uh, 1860. And then... Um, finished in 1865. Um, now, the neat, like I said, the neat thing about this was we got to each pick a Civil War soldier that um, basically through the walking in the museum, it, we kind of followed the, the soldier. Now, mm -hmm. I chose uh, Private Landers from Georgia. I uh, he made it to from the beginning of the Civil War to 1863, where he died um, after the Battle of Chickamauga. He was not wounded. He actually died of typhoid. So, uh, very, very sad. You know, not a nice way. So, who did you have again? I had Peter Welsh, which was I. He was. He was. Yeah. He was. He was from in the Union. Um, what happened to your soldier? He. I don't know when I know he like died in May like May 3rd do you remember what year I, I don't know what year but he died of a flesh wound that then turned into blood poisoning so um, and you know, it's now when if you um, when you get the uh, the recording uh, box um, there is an adult and there is a child. Now, Tim did the adult version, um, same as me. Um, it is a little bit more Dark. darker than the children's version. Uh, the children's version, there's, they don't have to stop at every point. There, there's yellow points that that's what they put in. Oh, what, it's and it, like 20 something? Yeah, and it, give, it gives a little bit um, less details of the Civil War. And, um, now, there is a section where um, you can bypass, but it kind of gives you the idea of walking in shoulder to shoulder, and oh, yeah. um, you you hear the commands and you hear the gunfire, and then um, so it was a room where you were in the middle of pretty much no man's land, mm -hmm. and. Um, you get to one part where you like the floor like shakes too so you feel where you feel you, you feel the cannon basically the yeah. cannon fire explosions um again you can bypass that yeah but i mean there was a, yeah you can 
And there's one part that it does, it's a little bit gruesome, where it shows you how they amputated a leg. Yeah, there's a section where they, I mean, it, it does, it's not gory, gory, but it gives you a good idea of amputation. Mm -hmm. um, just before the, um, what I call the walk of where, you know, you're walking the line towards the enemy and you're hearing the sound effects, the commands, before it, it actually gave you kind of an idea between smoothbore and rifled fire uh, muskets, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on yardage and you know how close you know smoothbore had to be to be somewhat accurate to um, the rifled fire. It was like a giant light bright. Yeah, so <laughs> it was a yeah giant light bright um, light bright. So um, so now we're actually going to head out to the outside. Um, uh, exhibits. So um, we're done with the inside of the building. We're going to head on out. Let's go. All right. So this is the door that we just exited. Um, if when you come out and you turn to the right, they actually have kind of like an outdoor classroom where they can give um, presentations on the Civil War. Um, very nice open area. Worth uh, you know coming to listen to some of their demonstrations. Um, now this this is a sign that kind of shows you okay this the, the one to our right what I just showed you is called the demonstration area. Tudor Hall um, is four minutes away, it's the closest. Um, that was an ancestral home from the Pamplins, uh, they you know family that they um, related to. Military encampments eight miles. Battlefield centers ten minutes. And the breakthrough trail is 11 minutes, so we are heading to Tudor Hall. Whee. So if you did not turn in the audio tour, which we did, um, the audio tour does, con does continue out here. Um, so this is the markers on the outside. Basically, you press 50 and it would give you um, an explanation of basically what we're heading to. Okay, so we've now just walked all the way down this trail, and now if we would look to our right if we we're coming down the trail is the Tudor Plantation or Tudor Hall, or known as the Big House. It was home to the Boussaux, um, which um, they descended from the French Huguenots. This was um, General, the Samuel yeah um, McGowan, uh, General McGowan of the Confederate forces, um, basically asked the family to leave. And this became his headquarters. Now um, the Bouzols, I'm sorry, I probably don't know how to say, say it right. It's French. Um, are ancestors of the Pamplins, so that's where we. Um, they got the the property so we're gonna head up on up to the building and take a look at it all right we are up to Tudor Hall um, it is open daily same just like the museum uh, you can go inside uh, the first I think you can go up to the second story but also the basement which has uh, more exhibits so we're gonna head on in all right so we are actually in the basement of Tudor Hall um, and down here they have, um, basically, this is what the Tudor Hall plantation looked like in 1860. Um, here's Tudor Hall right here. Um, this right here is actually, Boyt, I think it's Boyton Palenque Road. And then up here are some fields which later would become the battlefield. Okay, so now this is Tudor Hall in 1864, 1865. This is right at... Um, the Siege of Petersburg. Again, you have Tudor Hall down at the bottom. Uh, more quarters off the side. Boyton Plank Road. And then all the way up here is the encampments. And you can see where the earthworks are right along here. So looking you know, at this, 1864, 1865, to what this place looked like in 1860, at the beginning of the Civil War, drastically changed. Of course, they used, knocked a lot of trees down for the um, in, for the entrenchments. Um, so it's amazing what war does to the land. 
So another thing down here is kind of to show, you know, here is the the home, the Tudor home before um, the Civil War, uh, the hub farm of life as they called it, and then kind of switched to the Civil War. Um, so just, I mean, like I said, as you just saw in the... Uh, the models. This place just changed dramatically. Um, and some of the other things, and oh, there are some hands-on things, which we're not going to touch and everything, but, um, you know, questions, you know, how did Tudor Hall change by 1860? What were southern farms like in the 1860s? Um, did Tudor, Tudor Hall share the fate of the South? Um, you know, it's a lot of neat uh, information, um, also restoring Tudor Hall to its, you know, original look. All right, so we are now inside the first floor of Tudor Hall. This is the front door, which we, this isn't where you don't enter. You actually come in from the back, from the back door. So basically, if you come in the front door and you would make a right, this was the sitting room. Very nice. You know, very, almost very elegant. Very cold. There's no heating. And then here is an outlook of what this the first floor looked like when General McGowan was in charge, had this as his commanding headquarters. So uh, you are allowed to go upstairs. We're not going to go upstairs, but um, this is the living quarters uh, for um, the Tudor plantation. Uh, but, you know, when you look at this, um, very, very nice. Now, this is obvious. This is. Um, wallpaper to make it look like the marble, but um, not what you would figure a plantation, a, one of the big southern plantations in the south, farther south would be. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a plantation home. All right, so um, here's some of the outlying buildings. Let me go take a look in here. This was the kitchen and servants hall all the cooking from the servants were done in here. This is one room. Obviously the kitchen. And it did have a second floor, obviously keeping probably the meats and the tobacco. And then we'll come on over here. And this would be showing that where they did a lot of the laundry. And probably a lot of the mending as well. So as we're leaving the Tudor Hall, um, what, 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 what were you doing, Tim? Uh, I really wanted, I want, I took a picture. I really want to see if there's something in the windows. Uh, Tim, Tim asked me, you know, if he thinks this place is haunted, and honestly, it's a battlefield. So, um, it, I'm I'm gonna go with yes, it's haunted. So, of course, he's looking deep into those uh, pictures of his to see if he's found a ghost. But, um, but yeah, so we're actually going to head now um, uh, under Boynton Plank Road, um, head over to the uh, the battlefield itself. Um, and uh, show you that. So just to kind of, you know, give you an idea how close we are to the battlefield. Here is Tudor Hall. Where you see that tree line all the way out here, that is the battlefield. That is how close we were. Um, so it's not conceivable to think that during the siege, you know, this um, area on this side of Boynton Plank Road did see 
uh, cannon fire and stray bullets. So um, we're going to head over and show you some of the, uh, they have a mock setup of earthworks, take you to the battlefield um, museum, and then show you some of the earthworks. And as we're heading towards uh, the military encampment, battlefield center, and breakthrough trail, this is their tobacco uh, building. And then over here would have been the servants, slave quarters, um, being the plantation. So that they would have uh, been on over there. But now, but we are heading under that tunnel underneath the Boyton Plank Road towards the battlefield center. All right, so now we are finally over near the battlefield. Um, this is fortifications. This is a mock-up of a fortifications. Um, obviously, if the Union or the Confederate side, they would build stuff very similar to this. They would be on this side lined up facing that way. In kind of almost very medieval-like, they would have a moat or a trench do have danger signs. They've got their pikes up. And of course, you know, they cut down the pikes and they would just leave the stubs because, hey, it's great to, um, you know, it breaks up the, 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 the battle the battle lines um, and it's just a, a natural um, uh, thing to, you know, the, just stop soldiers. But then what they did was to make it even worse was after they you know after they cut all the trees down and make the spikes they took the debris ahead of it and created almost kind of like a barbed wire um, in front of that you know and when you look at it you know they're pr probably 50 yards from here to there so now you're trying, Union or Confederate soldier, you're trying to get over this and you're being picked off by the soldiers on the other side of the fortifications. Ingenious. And I'm not sure if this is something Robert E. Lee, but Robert E. Lee was an ingenious man when it came to the fortifications. He was an engineering, uh, an engineer. He graduated from West Point and he was just uh, a mastermind when it came to fortifications. But kind of ingenious to just use the debris and the branches from your fallen down trees. Now, if this was like a non-COVID period, you would have school groups here um, with civil reenactors. They have a cannon that does fire. Um, they would show them how, you know, cannons were loaded. They would show them how uh, muskets are loaded and give demonstrations, um, you know. Just, you know, I'm gonna walk up here to the cannon and see, and just give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, if you were looking down, at a, down the barrel of a cannon at your enemy. I mean, just if you were one of the soldiers on top of this fortification, you know, looking at, you know, like I said, being it, you got, whether you were Confederate or Union, trying to come over the, uh, that brush and just being picked off. Just slaughter. Alright, so um, here's where the fortifications were, where we just were. A, the military camp, as you can see by the sign, is down that road, but we are heading into the Battlefield Center Museum. April 2nd, 1865. Now, that date is very important um, to the breakthrough. That is when the Union forces broke through the Confederate lines, basically right here. Really? This is, this is where the, con the, the Confederate line finally broke on April 2nd, 1865, which led basically to seven days later to Appomattox Courthouse. The Battlefield Center is open 9.45 a.m. to 5.45 p.m. daily. All right, so again, we are in the Battlefield Center. Um, this is a 
basically kind of a 3D map of the Siege of Petersburg from June 1864 to 1865. Um, I'm going to pan in just to kind of show you. Now, up here is Petersburg, Fort Lee is right around here. Where we are, right here, is Tudor Hall. Now, from here to here is roughly probably about three miles. So that gives you kind of um, an idea. Um, up here is the Appomattox River, or what's known as Matoax, Matoica now and now today, uh, Fort uh, Whitworth, Fort Gregg. Now, Fort Lee, that is a U.S. Army installation today, but that gives you an idea where, um, and Battery 45, so, and then if we go pan up, where you see this right here, that is City Point. That is where the, um, the commanding general, Ulysses S. Grant, had his headquarters during the Siege of Petersburg. And the Union forces, we're basically all along down here. And of course, wherever you see the red is Confederate forces. So, and it goes all the way down. Uh, let's see. And here is Five Forks. Now, granted, Five Forks is maybe five, six miles by the crow flies of Petersburg. So this map is huge. It's massive. So, but that gives you kind of an idea where we are in relation to Petersburg, to Tudor Hall and the breakthrough. All right, so um, this is kind of an interactive map. Um, so Tim's going to kind of show you there's six different, um, you know, from the beginning of the Dimmick line to the last battle. So I'm going to have Timmy hit those just so um, you can see exactly like, so the first one is the Dimmick line. All right. So the Dimmick line lasted from the summer of 1862 to June 1864. Okay. It was Union forces operating against Richmond in May and June 1862 alerted Petersburg to its vulnerable condition. Confederate engineers laid out a 10-mile line anchored at both ends of the Appomattox River featuring 55 artillery batteries and connecting infantry works. Captain Charles Dimmick supervised the construction of these imposing defenses utilizing his soldiers, free blacks, and pressed slips. All right. So I think instead of reading everything, just hit the button. So the next one he's going to show is, show is the early assault against Petersburg in eight, lasted, uh, from June 1864 to June Yeah. So show that there's the early assaults. Okay. And then there's Grant's fourth offensive, August 18th to the 21st, 1864. So as you can see, the Union forces started spreading out. And then there's Grant's fifth offensive. October 2nd, 1864. So, so if you notice, as it keeps going, Grant just keeps extending the line, trying, of course, now, and this is now 1864, um, September, October 1864, the Confederate forces are now at today Pamplin. where Pamplin is. So in 1864, that's when they re the, the Confederate line and Union lines hit this area. Grant's fourth offensive lasted from August 18th to August 21st, 1864. Okay. Now, we're going to skip the Battle of Hatcher's Run. Where's the... Okay, hit the, the last battles of... That lasted March 29th to April 2nd, 1865. So, there we go. Again, red's Confederate, blue is Union. So, like you said... Grant just kept ex Grant just kept extending 
his line all the way out. And it looked like they, he wanted to corner them at the very end by fireball. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, he was tr- he was trying to cut off the railroad heads, so... All right, so as we're heading back towards the front, just to let you know, there is um, vending machines and there are bathrooms um, here inside the building. So if you're going just before the uh, battlefield or coming from the Tudor Hall, it gives you a chance to actually um, take a look uh, or get a chance to have a break. Um, here is just some other things um, that they have to show. Um, This is um, a beautiful painting. Um, This is um, of Captain Charles D. Gould of Company H, 5th Vermont Infantry. Um, He is known as, like, the first federal soldier to scale the Confederate works on April 2nd of 1865. So Vermont basically has the Vermont uh, soldiers do have the, uh, basically can say that they were the first to break through the Confederate lines. And then here is this is the headquarters flag of the U.S. 6th Army Corps, which was under the command of Major General Horatio G. White. All right, so we're going to go in and we're going to see a short film, 10-minute 10, 10 film called The War, uh, War So Terrible. Um, we're going to go check it out. Of course, we're not going to uh, videotape it for, for, copy, for copyright reasons. But we're going to go uh, check it out, and then we're going to head out to the battlefield. So yeah. see you on our way out. All righty. So uh, we just finished the 10-minute uh, the video, which before you even go out to the battlefield, definitely it is worth, first. yeah, go inside the battlefield center. The gentleman know. in there was uh, phenomenal, very uh, knowledgeable and wonderful to talk to. It, the 10 minute video, and it's 10 minutes, it explains um, what the, uh, what, what you're gonna, what you're about ready to see out here. So um, we're actually gonna head out to the battlefield and uh, show you some of the uh, earthworks. So as we're heading down to the fortifications or what's remaining of the earthworks, um, again, you know, pre-COVID, hopefully after all the COVID, they do have reenactors down here. Now these buildings are set in winter camp mode. So during winter camp, um, soldiers got very um, cold. got cold. So what they did was they created, they took basically their tents as their roofs and the trees that were around they cut down and they turn into basically mini log cabins and um i'm gonna look through so this this could fit four soldiers and tim's gonna go in there just to kind of show you i mean he's pretty much dead center and as you can see i mean not much there's a small table for their uh, plates four walls two four very small bunks the thing thing i don't get is i'm pretty sure this is a recreation i don't know how is a grown man supposed to put their whole body on the bed yeah so yeah i mean of course back then you know uh so you know humans i guess weren't very tall. I mean, five, I think average height was about five, six, it's, five, seven. They said like every like decade or like, I, like, oh no, scientifically, like people back then were shorter. Like, probably grown men were probably the size of me. Yeah. Basically, okay. these beds are about, I'm going to say five by, <laughs> basically about a one and a half. So, not much room. Okay, so now you have the huts with also their makeshift chimneys, and then you've got this. Um, this is a frame, very uh, kind of log cabinish, but basically to help raise their a frame higher, um, they built you know four small walls. 
you know, basically fit basically only two guys. Small brick fireplace. So that's you know, basically two two soldiers compared to four in that. Um, then of course you know you had your for those who didn't that's your summertime uh, living arrangements. So when we were in in the inside museum, they talked about um, punish punishments of soldiers you know for you know breaking regimental rules or use, basically uniform code of military justice. Um, one of the punishments was riding the wooden horse and you literally sat on that horse for hours. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, one of the other things was taking a wooden barrel like this and they would write thief on it and have you wear the barrel. Yeah. Um, when I did the, my school field trip when I was in fourth grade, so about four years ago, I did a field trip to Pantlin, and they showed us how they used all of this, and, like, they, they kept these signs over here that said, the straggler, um, I don't know, I mostly remembered straggler. And it was mostly, so we walked in the group, and of course I was in the back, and they made me wear the straggler thing. All right, so now we are here at the Breakthrough Trail, the fortifications. Um, you basically have some different trails to go through. There's a... 1.7 miles, there's a 0.7, there's a 0.4. Um, so, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna walk the trails. We're gonna kind of just show you some of the fortifications that you, that there is. Um, but just to give you an idea, where you see all this, these are all the fortifications. We are currently here. So, uh, these are still remnants of the actual fortifications. So bear that in mind. Also to uh, point out, uh, Petersburg Breakthrough Battlefield has been designated a National Historic Landmark back in 2006. Okay, yeah, so it's 14 years old. All right, so now we are down at the earthworks. Um, this is actually um, a break in the earthworks. You got earthworks to the right of us, earthworks, earthworks to the left of us. So over here on this side was the Confederates, the North Carolinians uh, from uh, McGowan were all on this side. Again, about, you know, the odds were five to one. They were, you know, basically up and down this line, which probably should have taken a regiment, about four companies. You only had about one company. Um, we're we're going to walk out a little bit this way just so you can kind of get a picture of, um, of the di a little bit of the distance of the Union. All right, um, we actually only took a few extra steps, so here's where we just were. Now, um, if you remember the earthworks that we showed you of earlier, the, the entrenchment, this would have all been dug out. All Everything dug out here became the earthworks over here. So the Union forces would have come down here, and you would have those spikes, you would have all those branches, kind of like makeshift like barbed wire, and then you would have the moat. And again, all that dirt that they dug out here got put here. All right, so. This is the breakthrough. So we're, we, we're taking the short trail. Um, you can see the earthworks still reminiscent out here. Uh, now imagine the tr none of these trees. The, this is all swampland out here. Now, in 1865, the Union forces would have been sneaking up here. The pickets would have been probably another 50 yards out, and you got Union forces that be that were sneaking up um, to surprise. So, um, but yeah, so all these mounds you see are the existing earthworks that are. 
150 years ago. Oh, a little bit more than that now. Oh, yeah. All right, so in order for us to find the actual breakthrough location, we had to take the intermediate loop. Um, in front of you is where the breakthrough happened. Um, obviously, they've kept this field open to give you an idea of the terrain. It's very, very hilly. Um, you know, if you came in over on this side, you get behind here, the Union forces um, could, uh, could be hiding behind. Um, the pickets wouldn't be too far out, but the Union forces came through this area on April 2nd of 1865. All right, so now we're actually on the Confederate side. We were just right there. But now we are on the Confederate side. If I crouch down just as if you were a Confederate soldier just peeking over, trying to be able to fire at a Union soldier. Oh. I mean, it's amazing that men back then would just shoulder to shoulder come across the field like that knowing that your that your your enemy is entrenched just amazing so when you're walking the trails um you know i as as a reminder these these earthworks are th these these are history these these they're trying to preserve them you know stay on the trails you know do not uh, if you come with a family of young kids, don't let the kids uh, go off the trail and get on the the earthworks. These, we, you know, we want history. the exactly. This is history. We want these earthworks to be here. You know, I, I want my grandkids to be able to see this. So, but again, if if not just coming here for um, for history, it's a, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful walk out here. All right, so we finished the walk. Yes, we took our masks off. There's nobody, nobody here. There's nobody here. Not even in front of us. So um, now, obviously, when we were inside the buildings, we had our masks on. Um, when we were watching the 10-minute film, we took our masks off just to kind of give us some air. But um, we're getting ready to go back in the main building, and we're going to go check out the gift store. Yeah. Um, hopefully, find ourselves a uh, a pamphlet pin to add to our pin board. So. Uh, Please exit. Shop. Exactly. Always got to exit through the gift shop. So um, let's go check out the gift store. Okay, so we're back in the uh, main building now. We're heading to the Civil War store. Let's go take a look. All right. As they as they always say, you end you end in the the store. So um, definitely a lot of good books on uh, on the Civil War. Uh, Women's history, black history. They got biographies. Basically, any type of books that um, you would find. Um, ooh, good book on uh, George B. McClellan, the man who ran behind, ran, ran against uh, Robert E. Lee, Ambrose Burnside, of course. If you know the Battle of Antietam, uh, you know about Burnside's uh, bridge, Chamberlain at Petersburg. Of course, we, we know Chamberlain from the um, from the charge of Little Round Top. Battles and campaigns. One hundred significant Civil War photographs. Looks to be good. The Campaign of Giants. And of course they have uh, a discounted second-hand book selection located at the back of the shelves. Kind of showing you the books first. 
And here's some books for young children. The, the Who Was, Mark Twain, Susan B. Anthony. Of course, you can't come to a Virginia Civil War Museum without getting your Virginia flags, which we may have to get those when we go to uh, summer camp again in Ohio, since we were known as the Rebs. Your iron-on patches. Of course, the, the Bonnie Blue flag, stars and bars, Water the Confederate uh, Robert E. Lee's battle flag, some wax seals. Learn how to use a quill and calligraphy set. Ink wells for twelve ninety nine. And then they've got hiking sticks, which we definitely did some uh, hiking today. Some beautiful prints. Bold reconnaissance of Stonewall Jackson. At the Battle of Second Manassas, General Patrick Clareburn, of course, what is known as the first Union soldier over the ramparts at the breakthrough. Got some uh, videos. Uh, War So Terrible. Um, that is the um, 50 minute um, video that you uh, see at the Abolitionists Glory. Very, very good movie. Um, a lot of History Channel, uh, PBS. Um, History Channel makes some great, great videos. You got your Pamplin historical shirts, baseball tees, shirts that look like Confederate soldier, Union soldier. And you got your your tin whistles. You made fives, little little drumsticks. A lot of other different trinkets, belt buckles, if you... And what's interesting is, uh, during the Civil War, at the beginning, uh, Confederate soldiers who were Union soldiers flipped their belt buckles upside down. Kind of like a, as a, also a sign that's saying they were not a Union soldier. Because a lot of times at the beginning of the Union, at the Civil War, they were still wearing their blue uniforms. Buzzsaw... like stress balls that look like cannonballs. If you've got a hiking stick, those a medallion to stick onto your um, hiking stave or stick, whatever you want to call it. And then you got your, your patches. So if you're with a, um, a group like scouts, like scouting, you know, get patches and stuff for them. Those look like to be three ninety nine, I'd say. Pens, paper. You got your different kepis and and canteens. Try to keep the uh, staff member out of the video. Then there's all other sorts of trinkets, shot glasses or uh, toothpick holders, whatever you want to call those. And then they have magnets, tumblers, mugs, their postcards, Tudor, it's a pretty one of uh, the Tudor home during the winter time. Um, this is actually um, the, the second room you come to 
inside the main museum that we weren't able to video, but that's inside the uh, museum. A lot of uh, tin pictures, kind of like tin types, as postcards. And you got your some jewelry keychains. And then something else we didn't see over here, which was some pins. So a very, very nice. And then down here they've got some, of course some wine. Most of General Grant and some more belt buckles. Well, that's going to do us here at uh, the Pamplin Historical Park and the National Museum of the Histor of the Civil War Soldier. In Dinwoody, Virginia. We have been here almost, basically almost like five hours. Um, oh, a lot of walking, uh, definitely comfortable shoes. If you wear boots, make sure they're broken in. You're going to do a lot of walking, but again, fabulous, fabulous museum here in Dinwiddie County, Virginia. Definitely suggest checking it out. Um, if you're new here and you like what you see, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Um, that way when we, we post new videos, um, you uh, know uh, when we uh, put, put new videos up. Um, also, I got told by um, the young lady um, the gift store that they do close December, January, and February. So during those three months, they are closed. Um, but definitely come out here and check this place out, especially to learn some great Civil War history. With that being said, we are off, and this review is over. See ya.